Welcome to the Happiness Podcast. I'm Dr. Robert Puff. What would we do or what price tag would we pay if we could live 11 to 15% longer and have a 50 to 70% odds of living until we're 85 years old or even longer? But not only that, we wouldn't be sitting around being an old curmudgeon just complaining about how horrible life is and how all the aches and pains we have. Instead, we'd be one of the most optimistic people we knew. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty wonderful. Well, the good news is everything I just shared is based on some fairly recent scientific study that was done by researchers at Boston University and Harvard University. And if you're scientifically bent, this was a pretty good study. The study was based on 69,744 women and 1,429 men. They were surveyed on their levels of optimism and on their overall health. This was a longitudinal study and the women were studied for 10 years and the men were studied for 30 years. And here's the part that's really shocking. What they found was on average, a person with a high level of optimism compared to one with a low level of optimism lived 11 to 15% longer. That's amazing and they had a 50 to 70 percent chance of making it to 85 years old again that's astonishing so now let's explore why this would be the case and second how do we become more optimistic let's say for example we're renting an apartment and that apartment has a monthly rent and our lease is coming due and when we get the letter it says our rent's going to be raised by a significant amount of money now a negative person would feel a lot of tension about that increase. They would worry, they would stress, they may not sleep well, they may be fretful, they may wonder if they're gonna end up on the street or have to move back home. There's a lot of negative emotion that runs through the body when we face crises. A more optimistic person would look at it and say, hmm, what can I do so this won't be as stressful? Maybe I can get a roommate, maybe I can get a part-time job, Maybe I can find another place to live that's cheaper. Maybe I can move home and save a lot of money and then maybe buy a home. This is the difference between an optimistic and a pessimistic person. And all that energy that goes into pessimism is exhausting, it's tiresome. And clearly with time, it's gonna be a heavy weight on our physiological health. With time, that stress is going to play havoc on our physiological health. When we get into a negative mindset, that is stress, and that stress is hard on our health. And with time, living under stress for a consistent period of time, or even periodically, it's not gonna be good for our health, which this study clearly shows. I remember two distinct times where my mindset played a huge impact on how I was feeling and the stress that I was under. One time, my flight was delayed, very delayed, it ended up being 36 hours delayed. But that whole time when I was younger, I was very fretful, worried. I kept wondering when it was gonna take off. I was upset, I was angry. They did give us a hotel room, but I couldn't even sleep because I was worried I'd miss the flight. They would call and I would just not make it. And it was a lot of pessimistic negative energy that I just couldn't let go of. Well. After years of learning how to not do that anymore, another time, the exact same thing happened. And I swear within an hour, I was in my hotel room sleeping peacefully, and I got up the next day and caught my flight. Didn't even think about it, and I was very relaxed. Now I do remember watching other people who had to get a hotel room were very angry, they were very upset, and you could tell the stress was very hard on them, and they probably also didn't sleep at all that night like I had when I was younger. But I learned skills not to do that. I learned that an optimistic approach to life is far better. Because in life, we all face challenges. That's a given. How we address them, how we engage with them is a very different issue. We can so often in life face the exact same issue and yet respond in such different ways. For example, most of us probably have been in relationships and sometimes those relationships end. It's natural, it's just part of the dating history. 
before we find someone that we choose to spend our life with. And sometimes those relationships end too. But over the years, I've worked with a lot of different people when their relationships end, handle it very differently. Some people are very pessimistic. It hurt them so badly that they think they'll never date again. And sometimes they really don't. They're done with the dating world. It was too painful. And whenever they think about it, it causes them stress, anxiety, and they'd rather just be alone. Others are thankful for the people that they've met. They realize that it didn't work out, but they believe there is someone out there for them and they keep going forward and are hopeful, optimistic that they'll meet their soulmate. But why would this play a part in our health? It plays a part because it's energy, it's psychological energy that is streaming through our body, through our brains. We're thinking, life is hard, life is tough. If I date, I'm gonna get hurt. It's so painful. And I remember when I broke up with my ex, it was so awful. I still feel stress and anxiety over it. And can you hear the stress and anxiety in their voice? I think we all know that stress is not good for us. It is harmful for our health. I mean, think about an ulcer. A lot of people get ulcers because of stress. They're worried, they're anxious, their thoughts are very pessimistic, and that causes their stomach to be in a constant knot, and that knot causes them to get an ulcer. But someone else could be going through the exact same experience, seeing it completely different through an optimistic lens and not feel any stress at all. It's amazing how most, if not perhaps a great deal of our stress and anxiety isn't external, it's internal. The pessimist creates a lot of internal stress and anxiety. The optimist pushes that away and looks for the opportunities, looks for the beauty in what's happening right now, even when there isn't much there, because there is always something that they can focus on where they can look for the optimal or good outcome of the situation that seems negative right now. That's the beauty of an optimistic life. So when we're under stress, when we're having events happening that could be interpreted negatively, an optimist will say, no, I'm going to look for the silver lining here. And they do. And that just looking for it, even though there may not be one, and even though they may have the exact same result as the other person, their relationship ends, they lose their home, they end up missing their flight, but they see it so differently. And that seeing it differently causes the stress to be far less. And not only that, this scientific research study shows that they may live 11 to 15% longer and have a 50 to 70% chance to making it to 85 years old. That's astonishing and worth cultivating optimistic approaches to life. So let's conclude with how do we become a more optimistic person? Because we can change it. Well, the first thing we have to do is believe that optimism is a better way to live life. To live an optimistic life is a good life. If we don't believe that, we're not going to change. If we think those optimists are just deluded, they're fooling themselves, I'm more of a realist, I'm going to live that way, then we'll do that. Our thoughts are super powerful. But if we do believe that optimism is a better way to live life, then we'll begin to develop these tools. But if we don't, we won't do it for very long. And this study, I think, gives a lot of credence to living an optimistic life has a lot of benefits. Of course, we're happier if we're more optimistic, but we now know that we actually can live longer. That's very impressive. The next thing we need to do is to realize that we have a lot of thoughts going through our head throughout the day. But in many ways, we just don't pay attention to them. They have a huge impact on our lives, but we're not paying attention to them. So we have to start reflecting. We have to start watching. We have to start listening to our thoughts. What are we thinking throughout the day? Are we seeing the cup half full or half empty? We may be very optimistic, but we may not be and not even know it. So we have to observe. We have to say, okay, when I engage with the world, when I'm driving to work, when I'm doing my laundry, when I'm going shopping, when I'm with my family, what are the thoughts going through my head? Are they negative? Are they pessimistic? Are they optimistic? Are they positive? 
because our thoughts make a difference, but we can't change them unless we know what's happening, what thoughts we're having. So once we observe, we say, yep, I realize that I'm kind of more pessimistic than optimistic. Well, the next thing we do is we realize we can only have one thought at a time. I know people say they multitask, but we've actually studied that and they do multitask, but they do it by jumping back and forth between different ideas and thoughts. We're only having one thought at a time, not multiple. So then we say, okay, right now, when I go to work, I'm very pessimistic. I think about all the negative things, all the things I don't like about my work. I'm gonna to begin to start changing that. Since I can only have one thought in my head, I'm gonna create a list, and on that list, I'm gonna look at the positive aspects of my work. I'm gonna reflect on it. And when I start thinking negative, I'm gonna go back to my list and say, oh yeah, these are the positive things, until that becomes a new habit. Because here's the bottom line. We aren't a pessimistic or optimistic person. We've been conditioned to be optimistic and pessimistic. We have habits that are optimistic or pessimistic, but we aren't. We just need to change those habits. And once we realize that, then we go through the steps of changing them. And part of it is saying, I need to do things differently. When I'm aware that I'm being pessimistic, I'm gonna stop and say, this is what I'm gonna do differently here. I'm gonna start thinking about the things that are positive happening right now instead of the things that are negative. Because nothing really in life is all negative and nothing is all positive. But we can choose what we wanna focus on. And by focusing in on the positive, on the more optimistic aspects of life, guess what? We have a much higher probability of living longer. That's pretty amazing. So at its core, Optimism and pessimism are both based on thoughts. But those thoughts aren't who we are, they're habits. We can change those habits through changing our conditioning. And this is the 412th happiness podcast that I've done. So that means there are a lot of tools on this podcast of how to become more optimistic. Lots of them. I can't go into them in this short talk, but there are lots of them. So perhaps we'll start listening to them over and over again until we change our habits and become far more optimistic. You don't have to listen to my podcast. There's a lot of good speakers out there. But try to find someone that does resonate with you and become more optimistic. Because if we do that, if we really change our habits from being a pessimist to an optimist, you know what? On average, we have 11 to 15% chance of living longer, and we have a 50 to 70% chance of living to 85 years or older. That is incredible. This study was truly amazing, and I encourage us all to work on cultivating an optimistic approach to life, because life then can truly be a beautiful adventure. Thank you for joining me on the Happiness Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, please go to happinesspodcast.org. And until next time, accept what is, love what is.